Nazir, um, you're a father of two twins. I think they're now teenagers. Um, what, um, and like you, like me, they're, um, and my kids are in Singapore, your kids are in England at the moment. If you were um, sitting uh, in front of Mr. Chung, is it? Yeah. Um, uh, what would your options be? Um, I mean, what would you like to see changes happen? Do you think what the National Education Blueprint is sufficient? Um, are we doing enough in that area? I know we're spending more, that's for sure. Um, I, mean, it's, I mean, there is a 20% uh, increase in allocation for education, uh, but you counter that against, you know, when you look at our Auditor General's report, we spent two billion um, from the Education Ministry on security for about two or three years, which sounds, I don't know, if it sounds, you know, imbalanced, right? We should spend on teachers and so on. Do you have a view on education policy in Malaysia? No, I think, you know, uh, Pemandu's doing uh, great work uh, in terms of addressing this mammoth task. Uh, but I think many, many mistakes have been made over many, many years. Uh, and if you look at the spend relative to what we have today, it's quite shocking, right? And clearly we've spent on building hardware uh, and missed the point on the software totally. I think a few years ago, under the Badawi administration, we were in uh, the... Um, uh, I was on the uh, Economic Action Council and we were talking about this issue and I just said, look, give, you know, you're spending a few whatever billion and just give me 300 million or so, right? Let me go and import teachers because all these plans about fixing the current teachers is going to take a long time, right? To train teachers, it's going to take a long time. What we need is actually a quick fix for our present generation uh, because we can't wait. Because if we wait and then they grow up uh, and so on, it could take very long time. I mean, this is vision, you know, 2300. Zero, zero. Yeah. Um, so there needs to be these quick fixes. And I know Idris has been looking at uh, some of these issues, uh, spending on the right things. And, I'm, you know, you and I were in St. John's. If you look at the complexions of our classroom in those days versus today, if I understand the gentleman's decision in terms of sending to vernacular, that's where he's going to get good teaching. And until we demonstrate that our national schools can give the best teaching, uh, no parent can be faulted for not sending the kids there. You know, that's their fundamental choice. Uh, but at the same time, we must realize uh, that it's polarizing the country. Yeah, this is why I think, you know, all things considered, I think take the money, go and import the, the, the best teachers in the world. That's a much better way to spend the money and improve the national schools. We need our kids. Uh, to go to multiracial schools again quickly uh, for the sake of uh, building this country the right way. Um, yes, gentlemen, sorry. Yes, gentlemen uh, in the white shirt, thank you. Your name, uh, sir? Amir Ali from Maidin, hypermarket. Government plans and government put in implement, but unfortunately they don't think how will it affect the businessman down the road? You have so many zero-based exceptions that you want to do. You know how difficult it is for us to implement. One person going to buy a grocery. Yeah, you say it's a post system, one of sales system. But you know the receiving system, when people deliver, the guy who sells me the baby milk also sells me the sunstick shampoo. Now, that guy, instead of giving me one invoice, has to give me two different invoices. One with GST and one no GST. And when I put that in my system, it's going to be a problem for me. Yes, 160 countries have implemented it. But many countries, what they do, sometimes I think, they do a simpler system. Singapore, 3% touch the GST, everything. Why didn't the government just put 3%? Forget the popular vote. 3% everything. Or you want to have some subsidized item? Flour, sugar, oil. Tak payahlah. Everything else makes life easy. You want efficiency? That is efficiency. Yeah. What you're implementing is really an inefficient system. Okay. So the, or the okay. number, the list, what you're saying is the list and the, of And the, and the paper front page, add more. Add more, yeah, okay, all right. All right? So, yeah. So that's my point number one. Yep. Point number two is that when the Prime Minister wants to make an announcement at four o'clock in the afternoon, the price of sugar will go up by 34 cents. 
does he know what happens in the supermarket out there? There's no sugar. Because everybody goes to the store and sapu. <laughs> I got sugar in my warehouse. If I don't take it out, KPD and KK will come and sapu me. <laughs> I take it out, I'll be the most stupidest person in the world, selling at lower by 34 cents. I just have to wait a few hours. Off the TV, say, I didn't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And when you want to do something, it's 34 cents. Why not you take it out 35 cents? The price of sugar has gone to $2.84. Not $2.85. One cent. <laughs> All right? I don't so, understand that one cent distinction. Sorry. Yeah, no, but, yeah. no, because you see, when they changed the thing, yeah. they took out the subsidy. Yeah. 34 cents. Yeah. So sugar price has gone to $2.84. Okay. It should have been $2.85. Okay. All right. We actually changed it to $2.85. We thought rounding up. Then KPD and KK came in and says, hey, right. come on, you can't okay. do this. Right. Uh, we have GST, we have excise duty. We have not removed the excise duty. Can we remove the excise duty? Because that will make implementation more easier. And it will reduce shadow banking and a lot of money. Seriously, thank All you right. very much. Okay. So what, what you're drawing on uh, is the complexity. The more you have zero rated, the more you have tax exempt, uh, it becomes a very complex system. And maybe the cost complexity might even uh, overwhelm uh, the revenues, I guess, in China. What, what do you say to that? Thank you very much for some of the very good suggestions. La. Uh, but I do know when we looked at GST, we looked at many countries, and we know that Singapore started at 3%. But all the ASEAN countries, they all started at... Uh, either 10%, except Thailand came out at 7 But all the other countries, including the 160 other countries, most of them, they all started with zero rating. And the popular view today is that we know there are complexities that are associated with them. I totally agree with you. Uh, but the point was this, that, that is the one approach that is seen to be popular amongst the, the folks. Lah. It's not very popular amongst the business people, I know that. And so that is why we said the only way you can deal with the complexities associated with this to give enough time period for the preparatory work to take place. If we were to come out and say, let's do this in eight months, I think that would be really, really, really uh, unreasonable. There's enough time for us to uh, allow for 17 months to prepare for it. So that those complexities, uh, Dr. Amir, that you, in my din, you can handle them. You guys are smart, I know. They're very smart guys, you know, they can handle these complexities. Somalia already implemented it. Ethiopia already implemented it. You know, Lesotho has already implemented it. Laos have implemented this. Cambodia have implemented this. So all those countries have, we can learn from them how to tackle these complexities and we will learn from them. And I think we will do it probably better in Malaysia and in many of those other countries. Not a problem. So and there are, all of those things you have to take into account. Excise duty? Excise duty, there is no move for the moment to remove that, and excise duty will stay at the moment as we do it. It's good money for the government, and so when it's good money, we do it. So, uh, as, as, so for us, you know, we are taking away currently the sales and services tax, and we're replacing with GST, so we're not removing that excise duty for now. Sorry. I just have to uh, take it with due respect to all the uh, individuals I think who spent their time here. I just want to have to ask, uh, try to conclude. I think this um, one thing about, I think one thing people notice about CIMB um, is your leadership. Um, I think you've, you've, that was your, I guess if I'm not mistaken, that was your first job really, right, at CIMB, investment, uh, CIMB Investment Bank, uh, um, or the, the CIMB Securities like that, in, in those days. Um, what is your, I guess, you're, you're seen as a big influencer of people behind the scenes, not the rah-rah in front. Um, what's your leadership style? Is there anything that you know, we can learn from you know, what you've learned from lead, starting from the bottom at CIMB Securities and going on to become you know, the sort of group CEO of uh, CIMB Group? I have only been uh, with uh, one company all my life. Uh, and I've known Malik a long time, and Malik has been with one woman all his life. <laughs> Was that so? Who got the better deal? I'm not sure. Uh, Thanks for that. Appreciate it. 
I just had to clarify, make sure nobody thinks you are yeah, with yeah. my wife. Eh? So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think one thing that has served me well in the firm has been uh, loyalty to the firm. Uh, and I think, you know, if I meet a Gen Y today, they think I'm a real weirdo, you know? uh, having worked for the same company. I mean, their, their agenda always is to work for one and a half years with one company and, uh, and so on. So, but I think loyalty uh, does pay off. Uh, two is um, you've got to work hard. Um, and um, I think um, the third thing is um, when it comes to leadership, I think, you know, I've got these separate presentations on things that I've learned uh, about uh, leadership uh, over the years. Um, and there's a whole list of them. Uh, I won't go through them, but, you know, it goes into details about things like empathy. I think it's very important when you lead people, you understand um, their situation. Um, and this is where sometimes I think, particularly on our political masters, are, you know, sometimes they forget uh, what it was like to be uh, members of the public, to be the middle class in KL, right? Uh, they're sitting in their fancy houses in Putrajaya, they kind of forget that. Uh, but when you communicate, uh, you have to show uh, leadership by example because people want to feel that you understand uh, what their plight is. You know, I, as running CIMB, I got a different plight uh, because when I pay some, somebody nine months bonus, he gets really happy. Next year, I pay him eight months bonus, he cries, he's so unhappy. <laughs> You know, um, so it's actually understanding people's dynamics at all time, what's, what's, what's uh, in their minds. Uh, and then the last thing uh, I just wanted to bring up is this, that you must remember that you will always fail. And the true test is actually how you pick yourself up. Yeah, life comes with failures. Everybody will fail. Uh, and I think even as a firm, CIMB has been through failures. Uh, and every time it's about sitting down the senior management in the group and say, guys, uh, don't just stick your, your head in the ground. We just screwed up. We failed. How are we going to pick ourselves up? I think that's, that, that's really the, the biggest lesson I've learned over the years. If your name was... Um, <laughs> if your name was Nazir bin Abdul Rahim instead of Nazir bin Tun Abdul Raza, would you think you have gotten as far as you have today? Friend to friend. <laughs> In that case, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you know, I leave it to other people to judge. I think I've always said openly, I think the, the, there is a branding that I inherited uh, for the better or for worse. Uh, it gets me into the door. It's like, you know, you buy a good brand, right? Yes, it's easy for you to buy, uh, but at the same time, you may have higher expectations. Yeah, it's just something, you know, I think we all get dealt our cards. Uh, I have to... Um, uh, 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 live with those cards. Uh, I'm certainly not the only uh, Prime Minister's son uh, out there. Uh, and, you know, I've just tried to make sure uh, that I've, you know, d lived my career, lived my life uh, in a way that's true to myself. Uh, and the true test is uh, whether I sleep easy with the way I've done, I've conducted my career. And I can tell you, I sleep very well. Okay. Uh, Maybe I add, I add something to yeah. I, I, I must say, I mean, Nazir has led CIMB. I mean, today, not many people know this, and I hope all of us know this. They are the number one investment bank in Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific, you know. <laughs> so, uh, to be, and they also have investments in 17 countries. So, I worked in Shell for perhaps longer than you, 23 years. Uh, and I, I spent a long time in London, and I was in Holland for a long time. But I know that when you work in many countries, you know, we, we operate in Shell in 100 countries. Whatever name you carry doesn't matter. At the end of the day, people look at businesses. If you don't have a good deal when you guys are you know, acquiring a particular deal, if you don't have a competitive bid on the table, whatever name you carry, it doesn't hold water. They just look at the money, is it good? bid that you put out there. Shell is a very big name, but you can't go in Shell going, making bids for acquisitions here and there on the basis of a large, big name in Shell. Of course it helps, but at the end of the day, your deal must be good. Your business proposition must be good. Customers buy and choose you on the basis. Every single day, the competition is there. And I think uh, people like Nazir, you guys have done a really tremendous job. 
and bringing a small bank to where it is today. Number one investment bank in Asia, in Asia Pacific Rim and also large footprint in, in ASEAN. If the government uh, allows you to continue and invest like that, you got the right leadership and you, you keep on doing that and I, I think you'll do very, very well yeah. as a bank. Yeah. Last question. Um, Amir Sham um, you know, went from Maybank CEO to um, Minister and Prime Minister's Department. Wahid went from Maybank CEO to <laughs> Prime Minister's Department. <laughs> What? Why are they going only to the Yellow Bank? That's my first question. But question that, that little to you: Would you ever consider come and um, join a career <laughs> and <laughs> join Idris side by side? <laughs> who, would, who would say yes? Who would, who would love that? <laughs> you have a lot of supporters. Eh? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Final answer. Final answer. <laughs> who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, 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 my I mean, career is set. I will retire from CIMB. Yeah. Uh, I will ride into the sunset from CIMB. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, uh, with that, thank you very much, uh, Nazir. Thank you very much, Idris, for a fantastic uh, insight into expanding in ASEAN and beyond. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, there's a small little presentation as always. I'm very not lousy at protocol, uh, Nazir. Just, um, shall we open it? Yeah, I think we should open it because, um, you know what? I play football with you all this time, but I never knew you supported that club. Oh my gosh. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, that's Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And Chelsea. Chelsea, really? Oh my gosh, I'm an Arsenal guy. And the number 19 is because um, he was, uh, it's an early birthday present for 19th of November, you know. <laughs>